welcome to Enterprising Entrepreneurs on NDTV Hindu. I'm Evelyn Matthew. On the show previously, we've been bringing you individuals, couples, business partners who've got into the art of money making by either late realization or sometimes by even accident. But today on the show, I bring to you a couple who's got into a business venture by again accident. One of whom who shared the dressing rooms with the likes of uh, Rahul Dravid and Saurav Ganguly, the other who's had a background of child psychology and has never even dreamt of getting into a venture like this ever before. But today, they have uh, created a, an abode of their own, a heavenly abode of their own called Adonia. And um, that's perhaps every girl's shopping destination today. Without much ado, let's go and meet this lovely team. Hi, introducing to you Tanvir Jabbar and his beautiful wife, Maria Tanvir. You probably know already that uh, Tanvir um, has been playing cricket ever since he was 10 and he's been part of uh, several Ranji Trophy teams. Um, Tanvir, uh, when your wife probably even mentioned something like this, did you say, oh Adonia, oh my god. <laughs> almost, almost. Actually, uh, Maple was started when I was playing cricket as well. Mm -hmm. So it started uh, parallelly, I would say, when I was playing the game. And uh, she wanted to start uh, a small little thing by herself. Mm -hmm. And we started uh, Maple in a very, very small way. Mm -hmm. Maple we used to manufacture garments then. Mm -hmm. Then we felt that uh, we had a family coming up and then by the time I realized it was all family, family, family. Right. So having played the game for close to 20 odd years, mm -hmm. uh, the next question came, what next? Mm -hmm. So what next and where do we go from here on? Right. And we felt that uh, we needed to have a, 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 a future or a, or a better uh, business background or a career. By and large, every sport has its own uh, time span and every cricketer has his age factor. Everything is there uh, which uh, confines to him and his tenure. Mm -hmm. So there and uh, having played for close to 20 odd years, I mean the question was how long? Right. What next? Then we felt yes, this is the right time for us to uh, kind of have a transition. Right. And so that uh, the, uh, the wicket to the business pitch transition was quite smooth then you'd say? Yes, very yeah. smooth and very unexpectedly smooth though. Uh, it was, uh, as it was run parallelly, right. we, we, we felt that it was easy for us to overlap. Right. And uh, the only time constraint was there. But then yes, she was there, Maria was there to help us out in uh, uh, almost every angle of the business. Right. So She's your lady luck. Lady luck, I would say. <laughs> right? yeah. I just, because you mentioned Maple and I've been looking at the store, uh, I, I just want to give the viewers a look at it. This is uh, the Maple in-house brand and, and this is the collection that they have here. Quite colourful, quite vibrant and, and cotton, right? You yeah, guys we have basically deal, uh, yeah, but primarily we work with cottons mm -hmm. because as you know, Chennai is like a 12-month uh, summer. Yes. There is no Hot winter, cotton. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically that's what we wanted to kind of give, uh, you know, we found that there's a lack of good cotton wear where you can just work, wear for work or for college or just while hanging out with friends and things like that. So basically we, about 80% of our collection is uh, cottons. But we do, uh, you know, use a little bit of silk and georgettes and chiffons for a little bit of, you know, evening wear where you want to give that little touch of glamour. Then we, uh, from a gentleman's game to uh, a woman's world, was it completely, uh, you know, did it, did it catch you off guard? Was it a googly for you? It was almost as a googly initially, yeah. but then I had a very good, uh, how would I say, a by runner for me <laughs> running beside me. Okay. So uh, I thought that the critical angles of the womanhood, of the girl, girl, uh, woman kind of angle, she could probably handle, and I was good in numbers. So you're the uh, money man? Uh, I wouldn't say money man, <laughs> I'm the man who does the back end job, right. and the person who actually does the job interaction with the customers, clients, merchandising. Designing all of the all of the girly girly kind of things she handles. That's the best part, and it made my life a lot easier. Otherwise, me learning the ropes of how a woman thinks and how she how she feels is going to be a hell of a problem for me. Both of you come from different backgrounds. I mean, totally. you, you were in, into cricket for a long time. You wanted to pursue child psychology and, and work with special children. Um, a little history, very briefly. You know, uh, why, how, 
And it, is it uh, a decision that you See, my, any point my decision was very uh, accidental because I got into a family, I got married into a family who was into fashion and, you know, garments. His mother, my mother-in-law and his sister who, who was in Bangalore at that point of time, who's still in Bangalore. Both of them, both the women of the family were into designing and fashion and garments. Mm -hmm. So initially I started off just helping my mother-in-law who was having a business, uh, who is having a business from home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she's been doing this for like 25, 30 years now. So I just initially started off chipping, you know, into her and helping her and I just got so involved and, you know, I, I learned everything from her and it was like a very hands-on experience which is much better than, you know, just textbook and studying. I have no kind of a technical knowledge in fashion and designing and things like that. So everything which I learned was when I was working with her and when I was helping her for like about two years, two, three years. So uh, that's how it all started. I must admit that uh, the store is already tempting me uh, to look around because of the colour and the richness uh, around. So let's just go around and, and, and maybe show the viewer as well what we have. Yeah, sure. We are in the Indo-Western room uh, here in Adonia that's got a beautiful collection of uh, summer clothing, bags and jewellery. Uh, now uh, Tanvir, I know uh, some cricketers have uh, you know stores. I know uh, Robin Uttapa and Sri Chand have a store of their own in Bangalore that's uh, got something to do with sports. But I don't see a cricket bat or, or the <laughs> ball here. Uh, was this ever a backup option or did you ever dream of you know having something like this ever in, you know, in, the, in the coming years maybe? Then? Uh, no, when I was playing cricket, obviously I was dreaming of playing for the country. Yeah. So I was play, um, having played 35 watt Ranji games. So cricket was all at that point of time. Yeah. And uh, then so happened that we started this Maple as I told you some time back. And it was so promising and I felt that there was a career out there. Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, we need, I needed to make a decision whether I would rather continue the same rut, same cycle up and down or try and branch off and do something all by ourselves, something unique, something different. So this something. was as long as eight years back? Uh, yes, I probably, yeah, I quit when I was 2003. At that point I was playing active uh, Ranji Trophy cricket. I played Ranji Trophy, then Trophy, India A, so called. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so having done that, I felt, yes, uh, we need to do something different. Something which uh, has a future for the entire family. So it's all cricket is all me, Tanvir, and going out and playing. That, that but it was a gamble at that point yeah, because, uh, you know, we, uh, as I told you, even I didn't have any technical knowledge. So whatever I learned uh, hands on working with my mother in law, that's what we were relying on. And for him, it was a totally different uh, ball game altogether. You know, even when you're playing cricket, you, you're not, you know, handling so many laborers, you're not, you know, dealing with so many people, you're not going out and marketing and things like that. So uh, it was a lot of difficult decisions which we had to take at that point. Mm -hmm. So, but now we can say the gamble really <laughs> paid off. Now, as uh, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, what do you specifically look into? I know, you know, you have to look into the schemes by the government perhaps. Uh, does the budget also matter to you? Because, because I've heard that the raw material and, and there have been a lot of problems within the garment industry. So, uh, handling that part of the business, is, is that that you, uh, is crucial to you as well? See, a uh, government angle to business as far as our kind of uh, business is concerned, I don't uh, think that has much uh, impact on us because here it's more one-to-one, -one, mm -hmm. it's more designer-based. Is that a, a, an advantage for an entrepreneur perhaps? Uh, it could be an advantage, it could be a disadvantage, but what I am trying to uh, get upon is that in our industry, in the sense, this is a fashion industry, it is kind of a, a boutique kind of a structure where you have about 25 designers showcasing the collection here. So, price points are related to quality, mm -hmm. they're related to design and there are various angles to it actually. But it's not a very, very commercial kind of a setup where you have uh, loads of people coming in every day, yes. you have uh, X number of stock going in and going out. But here it's very customized, it's very personalized and uh, from the merchandise to the decor to the pricing, uh, it's, it's all very, very hands-on kind of a feel to us. So I feel that uh, this kind of uh, uh, hands-on feel is very, very important to the customer. Yeah, but I feel the, you know, I feel the government uh, taxes and things that pay a more important role in our maple factory mm -hmm. because we deal with labourers, you know, right. we deal, for example, the excise duty which was imported or, I mean, which is uh, imposed on cotton yes. really shot up our uh, costings and things like that because we deal a lot of, uh, you know, we deal in cotton a lot. Yes. So that, uh, that impacts our production and our factory setup, mm -hmm. but not as much uh, in the retail part of it. Mm -hmm. You have uh, items, you know, even jewellery and, and, and 
these unique bags. Yeah, and that's and the reputation Adonia has earned uh, mm -hmm. in these eight, nine months. You know, we give as much importance to our accessories mm -hmm. as what we give to our clothes. Uh, you know, because what we feel, it's like the right mix and match. You know, if you're, if you're wearing a beautiful dress, but you just have the wrong pair of earrings yes. or the wrong neck piece, this totally, Absolutely. you know, blows you and out. And this is just through word of mouth, right? Yes. And uh, through the social network itself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the social networks have really played a, I feel, a very important because A, they're almost zero, uh, you know, you spend almost nothing on them yes. except your time yes. um, in that. So they've, but they've really got a very good uh, response in our kind of a, you know, segment. I think a lot of, lot of people are getting onto the social networks. So they've really helped us spread the word around. So if you want to check out some of their stuff while you're online, you can always go to their Facebook page. Right? Yes, we do. Adonia, and, and maybe glance through uh, some of their Yeah, we keep items. updating our page very regularly. So far, we keep or any new merchandise, any new designer launched, you can find it there so anything happening at the store almost immediately it's online so okay. uh, Tanvir Maria the wedding segment in your store has caught my eye so I think we'll move there then yeah, yeah. sure and, uh, this is where most of the wedding uh, you know trousseau or the items for yeah. for a wedding event uh, not uh, really bridal mm -hmm. but uh, we concentrate more on the guests you know the wedding wear kind of stuff mm -hmm. trousseau mm -hmm. kind of stuff now I couldn't help but you know uh, not, not miss this out. This is uh, Kalamkari. Yeah. I believe this is actually from the rural designers of some of our villages of our country. Uh, from Andhra, mm -hmm. basically where Kalamkari is practiced. So mm -hmm. these are made in the villages. Mm -hmm. So we kind of really uh, look, uh, we feel it's our duty kind of to promote these kind of artists. A kind of a corporate social responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, as much saying, as we right? can, you know, to mm -hmm. kind of help them out and give them kind of a platform mm -hmm. to sell their wares. You have, uh, you know, stuff that's like from head to toe. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. shoes over there that I couldn't uh, help but resist. I mean, this is something that I've not seen in, in many of the stores because it's the kind of uh, embellishments and, and the detail is quite grand for a wedding or a party. Yeah, exactly. Um, that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, do you have any competition? I mean, who would you look at as competition? Because we don't have too much of a boutique culture here in Chennai, at least. It's just coming up, I would say. Uh, then who would be a competition? Would it be exhibitions or, or who would it be? Exhibitions maybe a little bit because uh, some of the designers, very few of them who supply to us do come here. Mm -hmm. uh, for them it's more like a market study and you know more uh, of getting a hands-on experience of the clients and mm -hmm. things like that. But competition as per se, uh, I don't know, I don't see not yet, <laughs> not yet much yeah. because uh, we are kind of trying to fit into the middle segment mm -hmm. where it's still a boutique but when you say boutique in Chennai, I mean anywhere, it's a small kind of a space and you know where you have limited good stuff where people don't have much of choice and things like that mm -hmm. uh, but we as you see uh, I don't know if it's true statistically but people tell us we are one of the largest boutiques in Chennai mm -hmm. in terms of floor space oh, yeah, and things like that yeah we have three floors, floors and it's spread across 4500 square foot yes. um, so we're one of the largest uh, uh, kind of boutiques in Chennai mm -hmm. so we obviously try to make maximum use of the space and we try to give customer more choice in terms of every kind of uh, <coughs> merchandise you know mm -hmm. because we feel even though we are a boutique even though we have niche upmarket stuff we still want to give the customer a choice of whether to choose red or black mm -hmm. you know the same kind of stuff uh, Tanvir, have you planned for the rest of the overs of Adonia? What future plans for the store? The rest of the overs, yeah, uh, perhaps uh, franchises. We already have a couple of franchises of offers. We have it done only six months, six, seven months now. And perhaps a couple of stores uh, somewhere in Chennai as well. So once, uh, even now I would say we're just learning the ropes and uh, we're just about settling down. And uh, once this is done and we're a little more confident about doing it, uh, for, uh, franchising and a couple of stores in Chennai. Some more uh, inside detail from the store uh, and plenty more about where all of this stuff comes from uh, and, and the final wrap on uh, ent enterprising entrepreneurs with this lovely couple coming up on the last and final segment of the show. Do come back, we have lots more planned for you.